All right, ladies and gentlemen, now that you've survived one of our reviews of our unethical video, or our non-exemplar, whatever you want to call the thing in the bar, um, let's keep watching more of the bar scene in order to pick apart a whole bunch more of these things. Um, so keep a close eye. Uh, we've got a couple written down, but you never know how many that are really in there. So some of these things uh, we may miss, um, and you may be catching some more. So feel free to add more in the comments. Um, if you think we've violated something else, it's always useful to share it with others. All right, here we go. I should tell you a little bit more about this story. My brother actually is Steven, and he's the one that owns the place that I'm working for. He gave me a hell of a time as a- Whoa. Uh, <laughs> magnitude's going up, folks. Um, so anyway, here, um, <clears throat> as usual, um, we now have an indicator of that I have violated another ethical code. I do believe this one is 1.06. Um, along with probably a whole bunch of others, but um, so 1.06 uh, conflicts of interest in uh, what do we have multiple relationships. Um, I'm talking about a client that happens to be my brother. I mean, how much more obvious is that as a conflict of as at least a multiple relationship, right? Um, so I have to be able to keep my family life going. I have to be able to interact with him. Um, however, um, now I am kind of supervising him, giving him feedback, right? And he's paying me for stuff. So we, we do have some issues going on there. So we, we do have multiple relationships involved. Conflict of interest, maybe, maybe not. Depends on maybe some of the other stuff that, that him and I are doing. Maybe if I was a business partner with him, then we might have a conflict of interest, right? Um, or maybe if there's something else we were doing that, that could add to a conflict of interest. But um, in this particular instance, it's definitely an example of a, uh, um, of a multiple relationship. So anyway, don't do work for your family members. That's really one of the keys, right? So let's go ahead and get back to everything. The time as a kid, the b used to grab my ears. He beat the crap out of me. He did all sorts of stuff that I was, did I call him a b I guess that implies something else about myself. Anyway, so Steven was, he was over the top. He was completely had enough of me. I, and, but you know what? Now he needs my help. So guess what that means? That means I get to have a little bit of fun. And not only that, not only do I get to have a little bit of fun with his money. Like I told you earlier, I don't know any of this curriculum he's asking me to teach. I just don't care. One more fun little thing. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Magnitude's still up. Um, so, uh, so what do we got here? So, probably another ethical violation. I would probably go with this on a 1.05. Um, again, these things really start to get messy, right? Because uh, we're really going back to some of the other ones from earlier, from the previous video. But we also kind of adding 1.05 in here: professional and scientific relationships. So. Um, kind of implied is the fact that I'm probably not doing a very good job when I'm talking about this stuff to him. I'm probably not being behavior analytic with him. I'm probably either that or I'm talking way over the top, just telling him that I can do all of this stuff. I can reinforce appropriately. We're just going to put a DRA, DRA, and we're going to end up with behavior doing this, that, and the other thing, and we're going to do a level change. And I'm just blowing him over the top with language would be my particular guess. Um, the point being that keep that in mind, folks. As you're out there talking with folks, and as you're out there talking with clients, or, and whoever it is, um, match your level of language, your jargon. Make sure you match it to the level of understanding that the person is that you're working with. Um, that doesn't mean to dumb it down. It means to choose language that isn't full of jargon. Right? Explain stuff a little bit, but don't 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 mansplain. Right? Um, don't do a video like what we do. Um, just do a little bit of explanation. To, you know, tone the language down. Don't be hyper technical. But also, here's the trick: be true to ABA while you're doing it. So you can't violate your own stuff, but at the same time, you want to be able to communicate effectively with people. Um, again, it's not necessarily directly in this video. It's just something that we wanted to talk about as well. Um, so we'll use that as a, our 1.05 uh, professional and scientific relationships. Oh, I suppose we should continue on. <laughs> I just don't care. One more fun little thing about Steven. <laughs> I teach a class at the local university, right? So I am teaching about business management. I'm teaching about how to handle these sorts of scenarios with, um, with admin issues and with personnel issues and all those sorts of things. And who's in my class? His wife! My sister-in-law is in here. Are you kidding me? I can't believe you did just all of it! God, you just... <laughs> oh. That's enough! Ah! <laughs> Try to get no! <laughs> 
That is, I see, I, magnitude got a little too much. I returned the favor because he's been demonstrating that punishment seems to be effective. So anyway, um, what do we have? Uh, I'll bet you all figured this one out right on your own, right? Um, this one would be an exploitative relationship, right? That one doesn't stand up. So exploitative relationship, um, I think is what I have on my notes here. I don't know, my notes timed out. So uh, exploitative relationships is definitely what it is. I like my, I, his my sister-in-law in my class, hello, and she's even asking, what can I do to get a good grade? Um, now, we're not trying to get naughty with the video, but we're just doing an extreme example of how this stuff actually can happen in the real world, right? So what happens if you have somebody in your classroom that is um, a friend or a family member, something like that? There's things you can do. You know, you can have other faculty members grade it. You can make sure things are objective and not subjective. There's all sorts of things you can do, but uh, the point being that it's just genuinely unethical. So uh, we violated a ton ton of things in these particular in this particular video uh, again we've got 105 I think we have what 106 and 107 in here and you know you can probably pick apart others we're just trying to break these things down and make them manageable um, we, we we had a lot of fun making this this video and, and really trying to violate all the ethical codes for you so we can come back and do the examples like we're doing now and kind of work through exactly what's wrong with these particular points 105 is a really big one folks so I really want you to go back and read through that one in in gross detail uh, 106 and 107 are kind of easy to understand understand, but 105 um, is, is a challenging one. So make sure you spend a lot of time reading through that one. It's a good one. So we'll come back again for another one. We don't want to make these things too long.